Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is Count Yolo, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in this video, we're going to talk about the new Baul Starship as well as the new lockbox. Talk about a couple things um, that are going to be released really, really soon. Um, and that's going to be on the exchange and stuff really, really shortly. Um, there's also going to be, it sounds like, a, a couple new episodes um, and things with the year of playing on as well. But since we don't have official official stuff about that i'm not going to be talking about that in this video yeah this video will be the overview of the, of the starship starship comparisons like normal stuff about the lockbox tldr with that and then a little tiny rant by me about the starship um just because i've got some some kind of strong negative opinions about the starship that i am going to try my best to save until the end of the video so timeline links will be available in the, the description or you, or you can just click the time bar itself at the bottom to skip around throughout as well. That, that's totally fine. Um, when it comes to this new starship, um, this starship is going to be a science spearhead. Um, keep in mind, um, this is actually going to be a cross-faction one as well. So the KD faction have, have access to one of these for the first time in the game, which is cool, I guess. Um, they, they still have the same master packers as regular science Um starships in in the game really the biggest difference is that these starships have an additional weapon versus regular science um, starships inside the game so that, that, that's definitely cool um keep in mind though um this is a science spearhead not a science dreadnought science dreadnoughts are basically just science spearheads with an additional um hangar bay as well science spearheads don't get a a, a hang, hangar bay so in the grand scheme of things, you could consider science dreadnoughts and actually um, superior to science spearheads. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when it comes to this new ship, um, it does have a very high hull and shield ratio. That is the big thing going for this ship. Um, I'm sure a lot of people that are comparing this are going to probably say, hey, this seems like it's the kind of anorex. Except it's, it's from, from a lockbox instead of from promo pack, so basically just a cheaper, more awkward bridge officer seating for the Anorak Science Dreadnought that also lacks a hangar, hangar bay as well. So for some people, that's going to be the big thing going for this ship. Um, I don't know. For me personally, the bridge officer seating is really, really awkward, and I'll get more into that towards the end of this video as to why that exactly is the case. Uh, now, versus science spearheads, you can see from the raw stats, um, it's got a ridiculously high amount of hold and shield ratio while it's turning in, and impulse is really, really bad. But if you compare it versus science dreadnoughts, it's pretty much average. Technically, it's slightly higher in shields and, and in inertia, but that's because we've got two science dreadnoughts that aren't that strong and two that are so it, it, if you really compare it against like like, like the paradox and the secret of interax it these are the ratios you're basically going to be expecting from those ships as well so it said because we have so few science dreadnoughts it is just the way it is in terms of we're, we're looking at that at the averages okay so for the starting comparisons of self we don't have a ton of seven weapon starships inside of this game. We have some science spearheads, less size destroyers, as well as science dreadnoughts. I'll show those ones um, for the comparisons first, all those, and then we'll do a couple of multi mission vessels and regular science vessels that I consider to be more noteworthy for a lot of what you would probably want to do with this ship. Uh, because it doesn't have Lieutenant Commander Command, in my opinion, this, this starship is probably going to be meant to be more for science tanking rather than for science DPS. Um, because, I mean, let's just be real here. If it didn't have the high hold and shield ratio or its cool looks, a lot of people would probably be overlooking this starship entirely right now. I really love the crossfield. The classic crossfield, personally, is bridge off your seating is really, really nice and flexible. Um, you could do side, side torp with this thing really easily, as well as side tanking extremely easily. Again, I'll talk towards the end of the video about what you're kind of looking for for those two different types of play styles inside of the game. 
Rare cross field can do basically the exact same thing as regular cross field can, except with the ability to do tactical mode. And with Lieutenant Commander Temporal Operative, it's got a little bit more flexibility to do some extra cool stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not that super impactful. There's the Section 31 Science Destroyer as well. I'm leaving that there in case you're curious about it. Um, also noteworthy, in my opinion, is the Tier 5U Science Destroyers from, from the Sea Store. Its bridge after seating is ridiculously similar to the bottle ship. And that is just, it's just the Lieutenant Universal, so it's in a Commander Universal. But otherwise, its bridge after seating is basically the exact same as the new bottle ship. And of course, because it's Tier 5U, it doesn't have special seating. Uh, when it comes to the science dreadnoughts, here's the two cheaper ones first off. The Paradox is from a lockbox, just like the bottle ship, and the Cardassian science dreadnought is from the is from the sea store. So if you're someone who is gonna go super sciencey on, on the ship anyway, well, and using that tank of our universal for science, the Cardassian ship's basically already gonna give you just about the exact same bridge off your city. So if that was gonna be your your thought anyway. I'd say just get the Cardassian Science Dreadnought from from the Sea Store and save a lot of money. It, it also looks cool and it actually has a custom bridge. The Cardassian bridge actually look looks looks pretty nice. Uh, when it comes to the Paradox of ship, again it's because it's it's a Dreadnought, it's got a hangar bay. Its stats are similar, um, and from a tanky perspective, it's a little bit easier to use because you've got a lieutenant commander engineering instead of just a, a lieutenant en engineering so you, you you can get ox structure integrity field and reverse shield polarity very easily on the paradox already which gives you flexibility as to what you want the lieutenant commander universal c2b for the bottle ship if you really seriously want to tank on it that lieutenant commander universal has to be engineering which does limit the amount of science abilities you can actually put on on the ship itself as for the other two science dreadnoughts from promo packs, as much as it pains me to say this, both of these ships are actually good for science tanking. The Anorax is really good for science energy based tanking. Of course, the same thing is with like the Crossfield, because the Crossfield has like the exact same bridge offshore um, layout, beside, barring the special seating. And the Sona Collector is actually really good for site torp tanking, because you've got the more Morphogenics, um, or not morphogenic, um, and 20 tactical matrices with that tactical. The NC Universal you, you can use easily for another tactical for tactical T. Then you got the other Samurai Universal for just more science. And it, it, that is pretty good. You don't really need more than two tactical consoles. And honestly, the most popular stuff in the game is to fight the Borg anyway, and it, it's the same whole ratio as the Battle Wolf. But then again, both of these science dreadnoughts are promo pack starships. So there is that going against these starships, honestly. And also they both have, have hangar base, so there is that. I personally hate the Sona Collector science dreadnought from its looks. That's why I basically never talk about it on, on the channel. But it honestly is good for what it is trying to do. Also, you like never see it played in game. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you actually want to do side torp tanking for something that's way cheaper than the Soda Collector, the Eternal is ridiculously good, and so is the Intrepid Legendary ship. Um, because they both have click clicky consoles that are really, really good, as well as, as the not, not cool science vessel, because they can be immune to damage like half the time. The Eternal has a taunt console available to it from, from the 31st Century Cruiser, plus as bridge after seating is pretty good, honestly. Um, the Intrepid ship... Um, that's got the ablative armor console available to it, which allows it to be have ninety percent resistance when when you have that clicky up. Plus, with Commander Rare Quarker, I mean you've got an extra clicky console available to you. Which, as as you start to get more and more clicky consoles that are more and more OP in this game, the Intrepid's gonna it's going to scale better um, as time goes on in this game versus like the Eternal or the or the Vern or something like that, which is Commander Temper Operative. And they both have hangar bays as well, and the bottle ship does it. And if you're going to go side twerp, having an extra weapon, not really going to impact your DPS a ton. Frankly, it's going to be your science abilities that's going to be impacting things more. 
Of course, we have the Super Shield Spirit Builder, which is more offensive oriented and has similar layout to the Baul ship. So going side torp to the Spirit Builder ship isn't too bad. If you really want a Lieutenant Commander Command, the Kirk ship is actually pretty good for that. And it's got a similar bridge option layout, but it also has Ensign Universal, and it's from the Lullaby Store. So it should, in theory, be much cheaper to acquire. So, especially if you're going for more damage with Side Torp, the Kirk ship is probably going to be a better option for you overall. Um, of course, we have the Legendary Glen, which is a which is which is a great temporal operative command starship. Doesn't have a half a hangar bay. And it's not Commander Merrick Booker, so I personally like the, Le the Legendary Voyager ship a little bit more. Um, and also, you can't really tank with, with the Glen, frankly, because with Lieutenant in in Engineering, you can't get Reverse Shield Polarity and Ox Structure Integrity Field on this starship. But other than that weakness, it, it is a pretty good starship overall. The Sonar Command Science Vessel is also an, an, an interesting starship as well. Of course, we have some Fleets Intel Vessels as well. Intel is one of those more common um, science starships inside the game, frankly. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is the KDF version of, of the Somerville. And then we have we, we have the fleet scryer on the right as well. Um, which is a decent little rounded ship. Yes, it's got some new kind of engineering, so it's not great as good for DPS, but if you want more survival, it's a nice starship as well. Yeah, but of course, the Fleet Nautilus is a very nice fleet starship available to the, to the Federation. I wish the KDF had a version of this from the fleet. Oh well. And then there's there's the Vern, which also there's the KDF and Robin version, which has, which has like the exact same stats. All right. Um, when it comes to, to the trading console from this ship, the console is called Sentry Mode. Um, it gives you anti proton damage and control expertise. It's active. Calls in some extra bubble sentry vessels that surround you and link with you and channel blasts against enemies. This sounds like sounds like about the exact same thing as the ground universal um console of, of a similar name, uh like the bubble console thingy. Um if it's like the ground version and is just gonna channel against one enemy, it's probably not gonna be as good, frankly. If it's against lots of enemies, it's probably gonna be a little bit better. Um again, the theme that we're kind of that we're kind of getting for a lot of the stuff in this new lockbox is that things are going to be effect it could be a boosting anti proton damage control expertise as well as basically psi energy in general um from from the stuff in this lockbox the new trait from this particular starship itself is called intruder discouragement I'm kind of i have mixed feelings on it um first part that it doesn't really matter is when you enter comma you get a high crit chance for a short time for a lot of your DPS builds, this, this is just not going to matter because most DPS builds have really high crit chance nowadays anyway. Um, this really matters more for tanks that don't have super high crit chance. Uh, that This might be helpful to them. But the second part is really more important is that your crits give you extra damage resistance as well as whole regeneration. And apparently can only stack once per few seconds. Really the big things that we're wondering about this trait is we don't know um, the duration of, of, of these stacks. We don't know how how good the whole regen is. We also don't know what's the max stacks. That's super important because for tanking, there's already a lot of really good traits that exist. There's such a, like I'm just gonna show this here. If I was gonna, if I was gonna do a psi or sorry, a, um, a a tanking beam build, this is kind of what I would typically want to use. Just to remember, emergency weapon cycle, redirecting arrays. Cold Hearted and Type Iron Delta Prime is kind of what I use on my um, beam main right now. Uh, I mean, if I didn't have Cold Hearted, I'd probably use something like Calm Before the Storm or um, maybe Honor Dead, something, something like that. Um, or I argue something that, that to replace like Type, type Iron Delta if I needed more survival. Cannon build for tanking, just placing redirection rays with Within Barrage. For science tanking, um, just to remember. Um, Spore Infuse Anomalies, Entwined Tactical Matrices, uh, Improved Talk Officer, and um, Assimilate Power Conduits, frankly, are is a really nice combination. Of course, these two are from the exchange or from the exchange less slow by store and such, so a bit more on, on the expensive side. Uh, if you can't afford improved talk officer, then just the arrest trait is a nice alternative, and then you know honor dead for some more survival. 
because you're not getting that sort of with the arrest trait. And for Psy Energy, this is what has simply worked for me in, in the game, is to re remember um, Mercy Warp and Cycle, Redirect and Raise, or Within Barrage, whatever type of energy tank you're going for, then Improved Tank Officer, and then Terran Machinations, which is from the Mirror Crossfield or the Legendary Crossfield. I kept it from the Legendary Crossfield because I wasn't going to waste money and just get the Mirror Crossfield for one character. But for... I kind of for all your favorite Raging Captains, well... That's a bit worthwhile to me. So um, when it comes down to it, with this new trait, it's like, it's gotta be ridiculously good hull regen for me as a tank captain at the moment in this game to actually consider replacing one of these other good traits with, with something else, frankly. And that's, maybe that's just me being picky in my opinion on it. I think the trait would be probably better served to be a replacement on a um, on, on an energy based tank build for more survival. For for science tanking, I don't really see this being a thing. Science tanking, you already have history remember and improved tank officer, which are going to be ones you're going to really, really, really want to have anyway. I don't really see this trait being able to be fit on a on a side tanking build. Um, as as for the rest of the stuff in the lockbox itself, uh, we have some new kit modules. Um, most of these kit modules, I don't really see changing the meta too much really at all. We have the model obelisk, which is basically just a single target crystal prism, which since stuff dies in ground so quickly anyway, I just don't see this being viable like at all. Um, just saying, the bottle of drone is a melee restraining drone. Again, things die so quickly in ground combat, this is probably not going to matter at all. For engineering, um, we're in the traditional one called Shield Reinforcement Network. For your captain, this probably is going to suck, but for your engineering bridge officers, this could be interesting. Um, whenever I've, now this is stupid to hear, but whenever I have played elite ground missions, um, when I've talked about, you know, how bridge officers carry you in ground combat, that old video from last um, year that I did on, on, on my birthday, because I want to do something cool for fun on my birthday for the channel. Um, the only struggle that I really had with those super good setups with, with engineering or for things in general was there were a couple of elite um, missions in the game that simply the Iconians that could potentially one shot my, my, my bridge officers. This engineering kit module could give them extra temporary HP to not as easily get one shot by the Iconians um, and such. So this I find very interesting to potentially put on my uh, bridge officers, or at least the engineering one. It's, and probably, I probably would replace this with Sabotage just because, I mean, we have the new tactical one which I think is going to be viable, which is Tactical EMP Bombardment, which is basically an Orbital Strike version of Sabotage. Which is pretty cool. I'd, I'd probably use this instead of um, Suppression brought, Suppressing Fire, Suppressing Fire, um, that, that that Tactical op Officer are able to get. The Science Game Module is Temporal Anomaly Containment Unit. Unless it does ridiculous damage, um, Science already has so many AoE ground stuff that I just don't see this viable at all. Science already has so many great, fantastic things for ground. Just the way it is. But we also have a new bottle of anti shield. It, at least from, from the couple of pictures that I've seen, it looks amazing. Um, I'm not sure if it's better than the Section 31, but it's, it looks on par, at least when it comes to quality for it. Uh, for some of the traits, anyway, um, the ground traits sound like they're pretty crap honestly i mean if your dot's and ap damage do additional anti-proton damage over, over times it doesn't affect a lot of the science aoe ground stuff though that's the only thing i really see that would, that would be good with this and it's specifically said in the in the description in the article that exothermic and endothermic induction field didn't work with this so i'm like eh, well then I, I don't see a point to use this thing at all so you have the ground one to super raise um, catcher, catcher, and you do PBA with psionic damage once every 30 seconds whenever you're attacked. Uh, no, thank you. 
The two space traits are actually seem pretty nice. Um, your weapon crits, specifically weapon crits, restore some capturing re recharge. So, um, which means it's not going to quite be as good for a side torp build. Um, but but for your energy based builds, it's going to, it's going to be it's probably going to be interesting. If it does at least reasonable um, recharge and it's not a, a hard lockout on this thing, it's probably going to be pretty good. Um, the fragments of AI tech sounds um, nice as well, especially for those of you that are going to be doing Psy energy based builds because it gives you extra, extra control expertise and your control expertise will also boost energy damage. Because this is, if I remember correctly, control expertise is in your, um, is in the Endeavor system. So if you have already that kind of maxed out as well, and you have some to control locks in your other consoles, maybe anyway as well, you might or you might get a decent um, category one passive boost from from this trade as well. The standalone trade console are both they both sound good for um, budget stuff to kind of like be to be filler for free builds out there. On board the lithium recrystallizer. Um, your your engineering your, your new builds are ones that kind of like that that proc this trait. So like ox to bat or ox to sif or something like that would proc this like like immediately. Um, it gives you, you power to your lowest subsystem, and every non-weapon based power at max power gives you a most, moderate amount of bonus damage. So torpedo builds that have maximum engine power or science builds that have maximum ox power will get a will have will find high value with this at the budget end. Higher end people that might have a strong duty officer that gives you all that that whenever a proxy gives you max power with everything might also find value with this too. But I don't really see super high end players slotting this in unless the bonus damage is ridiculously good. Since it says moderate bonus damage, I, I just don't see it. The temporal anomaly projector uh, is going to be another console that sounds like it's going to be another filler console for your science. First for science damage, science energy, and tor torp based damage. It gives you AP damage, physical damage, and radiation damage, which science damage does a lot of physical and radiation depending upon what you're going for and the, and the abilities that you're going to be using. It also gives you some extra shield regen, so and it, it's active as a temporal anomaly that does an AOE weapon disable upon reaching the target. The description also claims also while it's going to the target. I really don't see that lasting very long, frankly. Um, it's probably just going to be the AO, AO weapon disabled once once it reaches the target itself. It sounds like it's going to be a, at least a filler on console for a lot of those types of damage. If the clicky is ridiculously good, maybe it's going to be a staple for some of the science clickies in, in the game. We'll see. Uh, we also have the new bottle of weapons as well, which is really, really good. At least, at least it sounds like it should be good, um, at least from a tanking perspective. Um, you basically are getting the refracting tetragon proc for anti-proton weapons instead of flat crit d um so that is something you are losing for this um we don't know if this is going to be just if, if the chain damage is fixed or if it's going to be a percentage of damage dealt that whenever it procs if it's a percentage whenever it procs then that means beam overload builds are going to are going to you're going to get a lot of value from them um otherwise it's probably just going to be tanks that you're really going to basically care about from from what we're at least looking at from the description, it sounds like the low buy set is going to be really really good. Um, the uh, antiproton omni um, is basically an antiproton beam that has a, a rapid fire thing built into it, so that should be nice. the The console gives you antiproton and, and whole HP, plus it also periodically cleanses control debuffs, which means tanks are going to love the thing. And the bottle connect torpedo. It's just a connector appeal with the bubble proc on it. Again, if the bubble proc does a percentage of damage dealt, instead of just a instead of just a standard like oh this just does a standard amount of damage as as a proc, um, if it, if it's actually a percentage of damage dealt from like a crit or something, the connector torpedo might actually be a decent torpedo for um for your torp on base builds. So like like Augie might actually find value for this thing. If it's just a percent, if it's just a flat amount of damage as its proc, then I wouldn't really worry too much about it. You're not really going to see this crop up besides people trying to get the three piece bonus to get that moderate amount of bonus AP um, from its, its, its clicky. 
Um, but two piece bonus gives you the battle proc to all of your AP weapons and your bow weapons also get um, also get more chaining, which again means if you're a tank captain, you'll probably you might want all bow weapons. If you're not a tank captain, it's probably just gonna be you you get the low buy three piece, and that's it. Unless you do be overload and that percentage is really really high. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for that. Um, when it comes to the TLDR, uh, we have some new and anti protocol weapons coming in in the next lockbox. They sound fun. They basically are refracting Tetron, but they have, um, but they're AP. The, the level of a three piece set sounds like it's going to be fun. Um, it is a, it's a rapid rap, rap fire Omni with a survival anti proton console and a, 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 another torpedo for, for anti proton based builds. The lockbox starship trait and consoles sound like they're going to be decent for filler, budget, science, and torpedo builds. Um, in terms of new space aircraft hits from it, the space traits sound pretty good. One that's that boosts energy damage from control expertise, and one that lowers the capability research times from 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 from, from, from crits. The ground traits kind of suck, in my opinion. The new kit modules, most of them kind of suck as well. The tacticals, the tactical kit module in particular, is the biggest winner because it gives you the, an orbital version of sabotage for for tactical captains and tactical bridge officers. As for the new battleship. And we're going to start to get into my kind of rant for the end of this video now. Um, it's a science spearhead that is KDF accessible. What do you consider the pros and cons to other starships in the game? It's meant to be a science energy based tanking platform with a trait that gives you that like your crits give you whole regen and a console that gives you AP and, and control expertise and stuff and summon stuff. It's awkward to try to use properly. And this is, and I was trying to brainstorm at this a little bit when making this video. On, on the left here, you can see what I think is probably going to be what you want to use for a Psi energy based tank with, with this ship. Um, uh, this is what I found to be probably is going to work the best ish to try to capitalize on what it, you're, you're getting from it, but it's still going to be awkward. Um, I mean, when I think of Psy Energy Tanking, I, I, I immediately think of the Morphogenic 3-piece and using Piazza Polaron. You can't do that with this ship because if, you're going to, if you want to use Polaron, you have to have a Lieutenant Commander Tactical and a Lieutenant Tactical. Which is why having that lieutenant engineering is so awkward with this ship. And it's why like the kind of interaxis is so good um, for a site sci energy tank as well as like the classic crossfield and such, because you've got an ensign engineering and your lieutenant commander engineering and your lieutenant um, slot here are you know universal. So you could put a lieutenant commander in engineering and have ensign engineering, and you have your four engineering things that you want. First shield player 2 Oxus Sifwad, Marine Spire Weapons, and Marine Spire Engines. And you still have that Lieutenant seat that you could slot for Tactical and have that Tank Rare Tactical and Lieutenant Tactical to get the Morphogenic 3 piece to work properly. And then you still have those science abilities there. Which means, yes, Science Energy is, is a very niche um, build. It requires very specific bridge officer seating to really work, frankly, inside of this game. Now, yes, if, if you don't care about Polaron and you want to do other Psi Energy types, the Tank Bear Tactical and Etsy Tactical work fine. Or if you want to do Morphogenic and you're doing cannon based Psi, psi Energy tanking, you can use the, uh, you, you, you can use um, Canscar Valley 2 in, in its Battle Tank Bear slide, and then you have um, Firewall 1 or, or Overlord 1 in that and Etsy Tactical, and this will work on the ship. Perhaps that's where they're kind of going for a little bit as well with this ship. That's where, where you're wanting to go. A lot of people are pretty, probably just try to go Psy Torpedo tanking on this ship. There's my thoughts for it over there. You have Crossfire Trade Firepower 2 available to you. It's not uh, CF3, so that is a downside. Um, so you really can't do as well for DPS with this ship, frankly. It's just the way it is. I typically use Checkmate for a lot of my... Um, 
Cytorp builds just because I don't like to invest more than one exchange starship on any individual character because I have a bazillion characters right, on my account. And the proof stock officer is going to be the one that I that I would invest in anyway. So if I did that plus this, is the, it'd be two starships. So I probably actually probably use just the arrest trade and, and honor dead, frankly. But um, yeah, this ship is is awkward. But at the end of the day, you could say that this is basically just the credit of Anorex, but with more awkward bridge off your city, and you lose a a um a hangar bay but it's available at, at a cheaper price lockbox ships are generally much cheaper than pro pack starships it's also newer and it has some cool some what looks like, like it's probably gonna be cool looks on the ship as well so if that's what you're going for um that might be what you're doing if you're not doing tanking and you don't care about the looks on this starship I do not recommend getting the Starship. There are many other science Starships in the game that are going to perform way better than this Starship, in my opinion. It's basically just the base stats and the looks are really the, the two things going for it on the ship. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, remember, everyone, remember to the best, the best you can. Try to stay safe and stay healthy. Um, There's lots of spreading around. Um, I do have a tiny cold right now, just the way it is. Uh, I've been doing a lot of, what's it called? There have been a lot of <laughs> long days that I've, that I've been having recently. So it is the way it is. I'm social distancing and staying home as much as, much as I can. So like if, 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 you're, if you're sick, just stay home and stay away from people. Um, just to make sure that you know you aren't spreading your viruses and that you know that you aren't um, in, a, in a higher likelihood to catch uh, the other stuff that's that's spreading around as well right now. Anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Um, and yeah, I'm assuming we get new 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 episodes on Tuesday. Um, enjoy the new episodes as 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 well. Hopefully, we are, we do get new episodes and we get to start, really start experiencing what the year of Klingon actually means inside of this game. Um, I will probably as well um, get do a new video soon. Um, talking about some realist ex expectations, what we, we can probably expect with the year of Cleon going, going on for the next little while inside of the game. Thank you all for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.